We live in a world that thrives on abundance. Our food system, a marvel of human ingenuity, promises to feed billions. But this promise comes with a hidden cost, a dependency on something that is slowly, silently, eroding the very foundation of our food. Fertilizers. They promise life, growth, and abundance. But they are a trap. The story of our dependency is rooted in the Green Revolution of the mid-20th century. Faced with a burgeoning global population, brilliant scientists like Norman Borlaug developed high-yielding, pest-resistant crop varieties. But these new seeds were different. They were hungry. They demanded a steady, high-potency diet of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or NPK. We moved from feeding the soil to feeding the plant. This shift was revolutionary, and it worked at least initially. But in this race for abundance, we ignored the invisible life beneath our feet. We traded complexity for simplicity and independence for dependency. A handful of healthy soil is a bustling city of life. Billions of microorganisms, fungi, and bacteria work in a symbiotic relationship with plant roots, exchanging nutrients and building soil structure. This is how nature has always fed itself. Synthetic fertilizers, however, disrupt this delicate balance. They are a chemical shortcut. Think of it like a plant on an IV drip. We're providing a concentrated dose of a few key nutrients, but we're not feeding the soil's natural system. Over time, that system atrophies. The microbes die off. The soil loses its structure, its ability to hold water, and its long-term fertility. It becomes little more than a medium to hold the plant up, forcing us to apply more and more fertilizer each year. We are treating a living ecosystem like a factory floor sacrificing long-term health for short-term gains. Environmental fallout fertilizers were designed to nourish crops, but what happens when they escape the farm? Each year, millions of tons of nitrogen and phosphorus wash off fields and into rivers, lakes, and oceans. At first, these nutrients fuel explosive growth. Algae blooms spread across the water like green carpets, choking out light and oxygen. When the algae die, bacteria feast on the decay, consuming the oxygen that fish and marine life need to survive. Entire ecosystems collapse, leaving behind so-called dead zones where little can live. The Gulf of Mexico now holds one of the largest dead zones on Earth, an area of ocean the size of New Jersey, largely driven by fertilizer runoff from the Mississippi Basin. Closer to home, Fertilizers seep into drinking water supplies. Excess nitrates are linked to cancer, birth defects, and a deadly condition known as blue baby syndrome. Rural communities, especially in farm country, often bear the brunt of contaminated wells. Fertilizers also release nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas nearly 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. In the effort to grow more food, we are also heating our planet. What began as a promise of plenty has turned into an environmental burden, a cost paid not just by farmers, but by every community downstream. Farmers in the trap, for decades, synthetic fertilizers gave farmers a reliable path to higher yields. But dependence comes at a price. Fertilizer is now one of the most expensive inputs in farming and prices have skyrocketed. In 2022, global fertilizer costs more than doubled, leaving farmers from Iowa to India struggling to break even. Many were forced to take on new debt just to plant their crops. In wealthier nations, subsidies and credit soften the blow. But in many developing countries, fertilizer shortages leave fields under fade harvests shrinking, and food insecurity rising. 
This trap goes beyond economics. As soils lose their natural fertility from decades of chemical use, farmers become even more reliant on fertilizers to sustain yields. It's a cycle of dependency, more fertilizer leads to weaker soil, which demands even more fertilizer. For many smallholders, especially in the global south, the trap isn't just financial, it's existential. Without fertilizer, crops fail. With fertilizer, profits disappear. For some, it feels like a choice between survival and collapse. Global inequalities, the fertilizer trap is global, but not evenly shared. In wealthier nations, industrial farms apply more fertilizer than soils can absorb. Runoff pollutes waterways, while overuse degrades soil health. Meanwhile, in much of sub, Saharan Africa and parts of Asia, farmers can't afford enough fertilizer. Their soils are hungry, crop yields lag and hunger persists. It's a paradox of excess and scarcity. Too much in some places, too little in others. This imbalance deepens inequality. Rich countries export surplus grain, often undercutting farmers in poorer regions. At the same time, global fertilizer companies concentrate power, dictating prices and supply chains. Farmers in Malawi or Nepal may spend a quarter of their income on fertilizer, if they can get it at all. In this uneven playing field, soil health becomes not just an environmental issue, but a justice issue. Who benefits from the fertilizer boom? And who pays the price? A breaking free. Regeneration and innovation, agriculture doesn't have to be trapped in a chemical cycle. Across the world, farmers and scientists are finding ways to restore fertility without relying on synthetic fertilizers. Cover crops, like clover and vetch, fix nitrogen naturally, enriching the soil. Compost and manure return organic matter, feeding microbes and building resilience. Crop rotations and intercropping reduce pests, balance nutrients, and protect the soil. In laboratories, scientists are developing biofertilizers, living microbes that help plants capture nutrients more efficiently. Precision agriculture uses drones and sensors to apply only what is needed, where it's needed, minimizing waste. These practices don't just cut costs, they heal the soil. Healthier soils store more carbon, hold more water, and support more biodiversity. Farmers who once relied on chemical inputs are rediscovering ancient traditions, now backed by modern science. Regeneration isn't a step backward. It's the path forward to farming that feeds both people and the planet. Rethinking the future of farming. The question is not whether fertilizers work. They do. The question is whether our global food system can survive its dependence on them. Can we feed 8 billion people without chemicals that pollute water, trap farmers in debt, and destabilize the climate? Some experts argue for smarter use, improved efficiency, and innovation in fertilizer production. Others insist that the only sustainable path is transformation, farming that works with nature, not against it. Communities are already testing answers. Farmer-led cooperatives, regenerative demonstration projects, and international research stations. What unites them is a search for balance between productivity and sustainability, between short-term yields and long-term health. A soil-centered future. For too long, we've measured fertility by the ton. Bags of fertilizer, bushels of grain calories per acre. But true fertility is not sold in a sack. It lives in the soil, in its microbes, its organic matter, its capacity to sustain life. To break free from the fertilizer trap, we must return to the ground beneath our feet. Healthier soils mean healthier crops, healthier communities, and a healthier planet. Fertility is not something we manufacture. It is something we nurture. <laughs>